at 530. Um, Corey, would you call the roll, please? Councilman Smith? Here. Stevens? Here. Cox? Here. Brown? Here. Boatwright? Yes. Here. Although it's not on the agenda, um, this being a special meeting, I'm still going to ask uh, uh, Shannon Rowell if we can come up and lead us in the invocation and pledge, please. If you guys will bow your heads, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. God, we say thank you for who you are. God, I thank you for this amazing country that we call home. God, we bless, um, we bless the United States of America, and we ask you to do so as well. God, tonight we ask for your guidance in this meeting. Lord, we pray for a spirit of cooperation. God, we just ask for wisdom for our leaders tonight, God. And we just ask that your will be done and that everything is said and done tonight will bring honor and glory to your son. And we say thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you would, please remain standing. We do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you. Okay, just a couple of things before we get started. Um, normally, uh, we'll, we'll do a, a public hearing and the agenda item, and I, in the past I've encouraged people to wait till the agenda item to speak. Tonight, I'm actually going to encourage you to speak during the public hearing, because uh, that way we can get try to get everybody in and get it done like that so and the other thing is you know this is a this is an emotional subject to a lot of people and we are going to keep it professional and we're going to keep it civil and you know it's fine to feel very strongly about things but we are going to do this nicely yes. all right. All right. so with that it is uh, our next item of business is uh, a public hearing all persons interested in any ordinance listed under scheduled business shall have an opportunity to be heard in accordance with Article 2, Section 212B of the City Charter. And tonight's is an ordinance amending Chapter 54, Health and Public Welfare of the McAllister City Code to create Article 4, COVID-19 pandemic face coverings, creating and establishing fines for Chapter 54, Health and Public Welfare, Article 4, COVID-19 pandemic face coverings, Section 54-52, face coverings mandated in public places, repealing all conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and declaring an emergency. So I take a motion and a second to open hearing. Motion Councilman Smith, second Councilman uh, Boatwright. Is there any discussion? Corey, would you call the roll, please? Councilman Smith? Yes. Boatwright? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Cox? Yes. Brown? Yes. Yes. Mayor. Yes, and we are now in a public hearing. I'm going to read a statement and then we'll start having asking people to come up and speak. <clears throat> to date, there have been 4,154,302 total cases of COVID-19 in the U.S. 2,117,903 have had an outcome. 1,970,826 have recovered. 147,077 have died. That's a 7% death rate. So whenever you go talking about death rate, you have to take it into context with the number of cases that have had an outcome. Um, Pittsburgh County has, a pro has had approximately 20 new cases, 22 new cases since July 14th. The following entities endorse uni universal usage of face coverings. Uh, the CDC, the American Medical Association, the National Institute of Health, the Mayo Clinic, Johns Hopkins University, San Stanford University, University of California, San Francisco, OSHA, the President's Coronavirus Task Force, McAllister Regional Health Center, Pittsburgh County Health Department, St. Francis Warren Clinic, Pittsburgh County Emergency Management, among many others, and virtually every reputable healthcare professional organization. We have a very contagious disease that virtually every subject matter expert uh, says can be minimized by wearing a face covering. So we have a disease that has killed 634,691 worldwide. Has killed 147,077 in the U.S. and has killed 477 in Oklahoma. Cases in Oklahoma have gone from 5,849 on May 22nd to 
to 10,735 on June 22nd to 27,301 on July 22nd. Pittsburgh County has gone from 43 in June, on June 14th to 81 on July 14th to 103 today. Whether we like it or not, the cases are growing rapidly. Nowhere in Oklahoma thought this would be a big problem. For some reason, we seem to have taken the position that things are getting better. They aren't, and they are rapidly getting much worse. We have an opportunity tonight to take steps before we reach large numbers to lessen the rate of illness that other places haven't. We have a moral obligation to take steps within the law to do our best to avoid un someone unnecessarily dying or suffering from this virus. How many people sick is enough? How many hospitalized? How many die before we choose to act? How do we look at ourselves in the mirror and understand that by taking a minor step, we could have saved someone else from pain, suffering, and even possibly death? We are elected to make difficult decisions, sometimes unpopular decisions, but we choose to put ourselves in these positions. And with that, I will, uh, I will work my way down the list. Uh, John Pittsworth, we got you up first. Uh, when you come up, if you would, state your name and your address. John Titsworth, 10 Ted and Douglas, McAllister, Oklahoma. Uh, the numbers you s spoke about, Mayor, are gross total numbers. Uh, like the total numbers yesterday in the state of Oklahoma from the very beginning were 27,969. But as of yesterday, from July the 18th to yesterday, five days, the total number of active cases went down by 300. Even though they went up to 668 yesterday, the total number in the last five days has gone from 5350 to 5,050. It's going down. Pittsburgh County, 17 current active cases of a population of roughly 43,000 people. 17 active cases. That's 0.04%. The city of McAllister, 11 of those 17 in the city of McAllister for a 0.06% of the population of the city of McAllister. 11 people. And we don't even know whether they're out on the street or not. They're probably not. Everybody wants to use gross numbers. It's like the 4 million from the very beginning. There's still not that many people. I don't know what the exact active numbers, because you don't see that. The state publishes active numbers. But it's hard to get active numbers from other states when you look at the listing, because they don't, other states, there's a few states that publish active numbers. There's several states that don't publish active numbers. So I think the active numbers is what we should be referring to, not the gross from the beginning. 11 people in the city of McAllister. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Prittle. <laughs> Kathy Sly. My name is Kathy Sly, and I live over on Electric here in town. There's a lot of numbers floating around out there. Um, the thing that I want to focus on today is that a lot of that information is really inconsistent and contradicted by so many places out there. Not every doctor, not every virologist, not every person that is in the medical profession is agreeing only the people that are on the mainstream media. <laughs> Maybe uh, people who have been speaking out about it, there's been people speaking out about the mask and the zero percent effectiveness of the cloth mask. It protects to 0.3. Coronavirus is 0.125. And flu is 0.8 something. It's not protecting you. 
The surgeons that wore the mask in the operating room, it's to keep their spittle off the patient. If there's people that are infected or are that concerned, then they should wear a mask. And if they're wearing a mask and they're that confident that the mask is protecting them, then why are they concerned about me not wearing a mask? It's against my constitutional right to make a healthy person wear a mask. Not only that, but there's a lot of contradictory information out there about the health effects of the mask. I don't know if they're right. I don't know if they're wrong. I got three pages front and back. You could rabbit trail this stuff all day long, but I do know that there's professionals talking, so here's what some of them have said. Senator Dr. Jo Scott Jensen from Minnesota on the Ingram angle exposed that the corrupt COVID case policies in the hospitals were getting paid extra. If a patient came in and had COVID, they got 13000 if a patient came in and had COVID and needed a ventilator, they got 39000 three times the amount. Some professionals say that the ventilators are what, it's, it killed the people. It made their breathing even more difficult than it already was with the virus. On 703 of this year, Representative Anthony Sabatini, he's a Florida legislator, and another growing, a growing group of professional lawyers and medical people that are putting themselves out there saying, if you get fined or you get some kind of ramification for not wearing your mask, call me, I'll represent you for free. There's a growing community of them. They must feel very strongly. I've never seen a lawyer tell somebody they'd represent them for free. So there's got to be a growing community of people that know there's inconsistencies. So before you pass a law that's going to trample on my constitutional rights, I think we should take it seriously too. I mean, they want to investigate our president ever since he's been up there. Let's investigate some of this. How come there's so much inconsistency? Did you know that they sent off a pawpaw and a goat? and they tested positive in Tanzania? The president of Tanzania, John Magoofly, excuse me, Reuters reported it. He came out scorning the test because they tested a pawpaw and a goat, positive. Okay, maybe they do carry the virus. And I don't know if it transmits human to human, but that sure does give me questions about those tests. Fox 35 in Orlando went through test reporters and found that many of the reporting 100% positivity at Orlando Health, and then they turned around and admitted the 98% positivity was not right. It was actually 9.4%, not 98. So somebody got a decimal point wrong. Elizabeth Cohen off of CNN, she headlined in April, Trump's wrong in so many ways about hydroxychloroquine. Fauci reported it to be dangerous and ineffective. Uh, but then a couple months later, here comes Helen Cohen again, and the study finds that hydroxychloroquine helps patients get better. Same girl, a couple months later. So these are huge inconsistencies. The CDC, why would I trust the CDC? It's an independent agency that owns over 20 patents on vaccines. They sell $4.6 billion worth of vaccines a year. The CDC. So why do I want to listen to them? I don't. Why do I care? Because these are my constitutional rights, and if I let this one go, it's going to roller coaster, and I'm not for that. Can I, can I just, I know you've made a lot of, a lot of points, and just we've got a lot of people to speak to. I, I understand that. I'm going to say one more th yeah. thing, and I appreciate your time. I would appreciate it if people would go out there and investigate too, and I'd appreciate that if y'all would do that before you make this crucial and unconstitutional decision. My daughter works at Captain John's. They went to mandatory masks last, last week, and she's creeping and coughing this week. The mask is a moist and enclosed environment. Bacteria breed in moist, warm environments, and then we suck it up and let it out. 
The number of children, he quoted the number for COVID. It's right at 147,000 right now. The number of children that go missing every year is 421,394. There's a 97% heal rate on the virus. Hydroxychloroquine and a zinc pack. It's like a bad cold. We're shutting down our economy and ruining our businesses and making ourselves sick and staying home in fear over something that is admittedly by professionals nothing more than a bad cold. And right outside this door, they post the number one ways to stop the virus. Wash your hands, get in the sun. If you're sick, stay home. We know the deal. We've been teaching our kids this for years. Thank you for your time. Thank you. There was an issue raised during that on constitutionality, and uh, we have our city attorney on the phone. Uh, Mr. Urban, would you like to address the constitutionality of this ordinance? Yeah, we've uh, taken a look at the constitutionality of all these issues. Uh, obviously, they fall squarely within the police powers of the city. Um, there's no prohibition to do it. It uh, is rationally related to uh, preservation of the health, welfare, and safety of the citizenry. And so, uh, regardless of whether it is an appropriate thing to do, it is a legal thing for the city to do. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Do, any, any questions from the council for Mr. Urban? No questions, but I would just add that that number of that lawyer and the number of all the doctors I've quoted is available after this meeting. Thank you. I Thank you. Quick question. Would you come? You, I need you to go to the microphone. Did you sign up to speak, okay. ma'am? Did you sign up to speak? Huh? Did you sign up to speak? No, I didn't oh. know I pressed. No, no. Hand. I mean, you can still speak. I was just going to mark you off if okay. you did. Robin so. Glasgow. Yeah, go the mic. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I just wanted to say kudos on the hearing impaired thing, but my question is, how do you prove your exemption? You know, you've got the hearing impaired, you've got whatever your list was. How do you prove that? I mean, do we... if, okay, I have like a 90% loss in one ear and almost 100 in the other, but I pass for normal, ha <laughs> ha. Walking down the street, not wearing a mask, I'm probably going to get stopped. What do I tell them? Is it the honor system? What well, do I need well, to do? Well, first of all, I think you're misunderstanding the ordinance. Walking down the street, you would not be stopped. It's well, the, 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 the mask requirement in the ordinance is only when you're in public places where you're, it's not possible to socially right. distance. So, the, But if I'm not, in a group of people and, like, I'm talking to John, he's got his mask off so I can understand him. Somebody comes in like, hey, you're not following the ordinance. How do I... There's also, there's also in the ordinances uh, exceptions made in, that, in those cases. Well, I mean, I just don't, I'm just saying, how do I prove that, though? I mean, did I just take my word for it or what? Yes, I'm sure they would. Okay. All right. I just wanted to know. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, I got uh, William Cathy next. Out in the hall. Somebody check to see if he's out in the hall. No. All right. We will go on to uh, is it Corey Nelson? Corey. Carrie Nelson? Corey. Corey? He's out there. No. Uh, he's out there. Yeah, I, I, he said he didn't want to talk. Uh, Lauren Nelson? I only have a couple of things to point out. I need you to, to say your name and your address. Uh, Lauren Nelson, and what else? Address. Uh, 108 Granite Road, McAllister. Okay. Um, I do know that I don't have any proof. I just, I know that um, the masks that we are wearing or to wear, that we breathe out CO2 
and the trees that God had put on this earth is the oxygen that cleans that up. And when we breathe it in and out, it cleans our air. And so if we, our immune system, we have a mask covering our face and our nose, and we breathe out, we're inhaling back the CO2 that we are to exhale. And so it makes it ascetic to our immune systems. Um, I do also, a while ago, when we were all in here talking, or you guys were in here talking, um, so is this how it's supposed to be? You guys wear a mask and he doesn't wear a mask if we are so far apart? Or are we to wear it 24 seven if we're in public places? It, well, the, the ordinance talks about public, uh, public accommodations, public places, and it, it's essentially, it, uh, assuming it were to pass, uh, you would be required to wear it when you were in those places and unable to socially distance. Okay, so then that would be everywhere other than outside. Well, I think we're socially distanced in here, right? I mean, yeah. we're, we're for the most part six feet apart, so. Okay, then why are we wearing them? Because when you do get into crowds where you can't socially distance. So that contradicted what was just said, correct? No, no, because you can yeah. socially distance here, correct? Right. Right. So then why are you wearing them? Yeah. Can I, I'm just uh, asking, I out of respect, because, I'm just asking. Because I choose to, because I understand that wearing a mask is, is a source control. It's not, your breathing isn't going to give it to me. It's my breathing could possibly give it to you. So I respect you guys enough to wear it in case that I would be contagious because up to 40% of cases are asymptomatic. And then there's other cases on top of that that are pre-symptomatic that are still shedding the virus and can make people sick. So you wear the mask to keep, or I wear it to keep from getting you sick. You would wear it to keep from me getting sick. That's the idea behind the masks. Okay, it's, it's and source control. does it come in through our eyes and things like that? Uh, it's the, the vast majority of them come in through your mouth and your nose. And but it, and they're does it come in through our eyes? I, I'm not, I, I'm not a doctor, so I don't, oh, I okay. haven't gone that far. So we job. don't have all the proof? Uh, well, we have proof that it, that the huge majority of cases are through uh, uh, respiratory droplets from sneezing, coughing, uh, excited speech, things like that, that, uh, that I transfer to someone else. Okay. I would actually like to interject on I'm that. sorry, I'm sorry. Um, when everybody else is done, you can take notes and I'll address anything then, okay? Because we're going to give everybody a chance. There's a lot of people here. That's all. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. I thought you wanted us to talk when the point was to be made. Well, if you do, if you do, the, if you do that, I'm going to do it. And somebody else is going to do it. We're not oh, going to get anywhere. I thought that's what you encouraged us to do. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I want to get everybody to get what they have to say, and then, then if there's anything after that, we can we can Perfect. go from there. Okay. Okay. No problem. Howard Kennedy. My name is Howard Kennedy. I live at 1402 East Osage here in McAllister. Uh, for those of you who know me, I go by the name Ben. Mayor, I spoke to you yesterday on the phone. Sorry about the, the cut, bad cut signal, now. but when I work out of town quite a bit. so. Uh, I, I appreciate John and Kathy for giving you the numbers. And this is my, it's what I told you yesterday, and I'll share it with everybody else, Billy Jack. Being elected doesn't make you smart. Being elected doesn't make you a ruler. Being elected makes you a representative of the people. Amen. And the people here want to represent themselves on the street and act like citizens, good citizens between each other. And if we choose to wear a mask when around somebody that's sickly, we want to do that. And when we're in comfortable places where nobody is afraid of uh, this disease because of the numbers that prove to be false in a lot of cases. Uh, we want to be able to make our own minds up. We don't need the city council mandating what we are to wear. Number one is not all these masks are created equal. Yours is made out of cotton. Yours is made out of paper. I've got a bandana in my pocket. It's going to be too, if you force me to wear it, it's going to be two layers thick. It's not going to protect anything. I've been around pers uh, per uh, personal protective equipment since 1985 where I worked in the hazardous materials industry came up through triad transport here in town worked for John Tithworth as a safety director he can attest to that um, currently I work in the oil field where I wear personal protective equipment if you're not officials if you're not certified in personal protective equipment don't force us to wear what you don't understand if you're going to force us to wear it, then it all needs to be in 95. And the city, if they're going to force us to wear a uniform, needs to provide for that uniform. Yes. It's an N95. 
and that's that's what the government recommends for their employees. City's willing to fit, flit that bill. You can mandate all you want to, but until that time, you have no business in our personal pockets. You have no business in our personal lives. You run the city, keep us safe with our little laws on our traffic laws, our roundabouts, our bat. Oh, by the way, you got a broken water main at 14th or 15th and Osage right now. I bet you don't even know about that. Uh, you worry about those things and let the citizens of McAllister, we can take care of ourselves. Govern us by what we want, not by what you think is best for us. It doesn't make you smart because you're sitting in an elected official seat. It makes you an employee of the people that put you here. That's right. And there's several of you I'm going to get a nod from because you agree with me. Several of you think that you know better than the rest of us. You don't. You know, I could sit here and name all the things I'm qualified to do. I can fly an airplane. I'm instrument rated. I can run heavy equipment. I'm a scuba diver. I'm a, I'm a preacher. I'm a, I've got a college education. I can do all kinds of things. That doesn't make me any smarter or less smart than anybody else. It just makes me educated. It doesn't make me know what I need. It doesn't make me know everything I need to know that goes on in this world. Out of all the things that are known in this world, how much do you know? You don't know much. None of us do. So don't start acting like you've got this corner on the market of knowledge when the governor himself hasn't recommended. He recommends it, but he hasn't mandated throughout the state. The president himself today in a live broadcast recommended it, but did not mandate it. What gives you the right to yes. step on what we want? Yeah. Yes. Don't do it. Because do you don't want the repercussions that are to come from That's this. Right. Exactly. You don't. No. Because everybody that affirms this and if it's voted in the bill, into uh, law today in the city or into a uh, statute, whatever you call it, here in the city, everybody that affirms this, your names are going to be recorded. It's going to be on permanent record. And when lawsuits come up later on down the road and go before the Supreme Court, guess who's going to be defending themselves personally? And if we're wrong, we get sick, we take that upon ourselves. But those of us, the non-11 people that are healthy and have not tested positive for this disease, we're not making each other sick. We're not making each other well. We're just going about our lives. Eleven people. By the way, it's an emergency. I keep hearing that word emergency. What defines an emergency? Eleven people out of, uh, John, how many people in this city? Eleven people out of 18,000. Eleven people out of 47,000 in this county? Well, uh, 17 out of... Uh, 103. 17,000 out of... There are 17... Active. Active cases. There's been 103 cases, though. There so. have been. That's yeah. like, it's I it's, it, when I can. I don't it's doubled okay. in a month. But anyway, that's we know the numbers. Now, this is the thing. How many of them, and I asked you on the phone yesterday, out of all these people that are sick right now, active cases, how many of these are hospitalizations? How many of these are on ventilators? How many of them are hospitalizations? Do you have that number? I do. I do. Let's see how, let's we'll see what the true thing is here. Uh, the current number of hospital hospitalizations on the 22nd, that's yesterday, Okay. Uh, 630. No, I'm talking about in Pittsburgh County and McAllister. No, I don't have that number Okay. Pittsburgh Apparently, then, 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 uh, how many? I think 11. Uh, Two were on vents. They were old and in bad health. Okay, but you've got 11 active in the hospital right now? I think that's what I heard. So the only, the only active cases that we have in the city are in the hospital? So they're, they're not around the rest of us anyway. So what are we standing on here as far as an emergency go? These people are already being treated in the hospital, if that's true. Now, that wasn't my words. That was the city council just now, uh, Councilman Smith. If you're asking me, I will repeat well, what Councilman, I said. Well, Councilman, I understand, yeah. but Councilman Smith just said that those 11 cases are in the hospital. Mm -hmm. and, so, and they were pre-symptomatic, and they could have been asymptomatic before they, before they ended up getting sick. Asymptomatic, pre-symptomatic. You know what? Before this, I, I've been around people that have... Uh, have had tuberculosis and AIDS and all kinds of things, and we didn't worry about being asymptomatic or non-symptomatic. We just went about our lives. We didn't walk around in fear. And I, and I, for one, I'm not going to be one that walked around in fear. And I'm not going to wear a city uniform either. So uh, let's. I, I'm going to uh, give up the microphone. And but anyway, do what your people want, not what yes, you yes, think is yes. best for us. You're not mom and dad. Right. You are elected to represent and not to rule. None of you are here to rule, and you can all be replaced. And we can all we can all go back to the, we can all sign documents and have you guys recalled if we want to, if it goes that far. But that's not a threat. But that's just the way the process works. So you're not in a permanent position, but we're permanently citizens here that choose to live here, and you have to live amongst us. 
So, and that's not a threat, that's just saying, don't rule us, represent us and listen to us. Be our listening ear and our voice. So, anyway, I'm not upset, I'm passionate. My wife always says, you sound so mean. I'm not, I'm just passionate about what I talk about. I believe in what I believe. Uh, I don't operate out of fear, and this city council doesn't need to operate out of fear. If you want to set an example, set an example to the people out there that are living in fear that we're going to move forward, That's right. and we're going to keep our businesses open, because yes. I'll tell you what, if you make everybody in this town wear a mask, I'm going to go to these little smaller towns where I don't have to. That's it's right. just that easy for me. Right. I'm going to take my money to Kiowa or to Hartshorn, or I'm going to go somewhere else that doesn't uh, require a mask. That's just where it's going to be. Sure. So anyway, check that water leak. <laughs> I already text. I text the public works director. I'm sorry. I text the public work director. Yeah, that's a good example right there. <laughs> you can't understand people when they're talking. Buddy Jack, it's good to see. You. Oh, by the way, the next name on there, uh, Karen. Yes. She's not going to speak. She told me that one. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Charlie Bake. Is it Bake? Charlie Bake. Yeah, they left the E and the R off, I guess, on my, on my list. My name's Charlie Baker. I live on 2214 Sycamore Street, McAllister. Um, I don't know much about this stuff. I've never been in no kind of city council meeting, but it means something to me, first of all. I'm a veteran. I believe in freedom. Second, well, really first, I'm a Christian. God saved me 22 years ago. And I want to say this. In the Bible, there's a man named Nebuchadnezzar. He was a king, and he set out rules. Sometimes he set out those rules because he was under pressure from other people around him, the people that worked with him and worked supposedly for him. But there was an agenda, and there's an agenda right now. Yes. And it's not just about the mask. It's going to go farther than that. And if I lay down my freedom now, what I lay down on this side, I won't get back on the other side unless I fight for it. Yes. And I'm here to tell you, I don't know who's going to stand up. But in the Bible with Nebuchadnezzar, there was three Hebrew children named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they stood up. And they said, oh, King, we're not careful to answer you. You heat that fiery furnace up. And he did. Seven times hotter. And they stepped into that fiery furnace. And the men that threw them in there died. But when the king looked in that furnace, he said, I threw three people in there, but there's four in that furnace. And that fourth man was as an image of the Son of God is what he seen. Understand this. You can make laws and you can do what you think is right. But you better consult the real lawmaker right there. I don't know much. I don't claim to know much. I'm just an old country boy from southeast Oklahoma. But I'll do what I can to protect what's mine. And what other men have died for. What other men are walking around on the street with prostrate, prosthetics? They don't have legs. They don't have arms. They fought for this country, and they died for this country. Doesn't matter who they are, what color they are, but they did something that they were called on to do to fight for my freedom, and I did it too in the United States Navy. I don't have a whole lot to say, but I can tell you this. If you start taking away people's freedom, Sooner or later, you're going to lose your own freedom. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jimmy Williams, you're up next. Thank you, Mayor and Council. It's a pleasure to be before you today for just a few moments. Uh, Jimmy Williams, 803 Village Boulevard here in the great city of McAllister. 
And the reason I come today is a couple of things. This has somehow become a political issue of, of freedoms, if you heard the gentleman, and that's what I love about our democracy. We all have a word to say. We can all say what we wish. That's America. But what brought this home to me about, oh, up until about three weeks ago, I really didn't give a lot of credibility that I would have any family member that would be harmed by this virus, whatever it is. But my father now, 80 years old, will be 81 on uh, Saturday, has been now for 12 days in ICU fighting for his life because of this silly thing. And I would have told you that that changed my mind because it did. And I got to thinking about the mask issue. In our office, we, our, our company, we take care of a lot of older citizens in our city, in our county. And every one of them that come in has said, we feel more comfortable if we had a mask just for you. So we supply all the stuff they need. I'm not saying that you have to wear the mask, you don't have to wear the mask, but I think when we can do something that saves the overall population by implementing something so simple that can be removed and so easily purchased at this point, you can order them on Amazon, get them what you need, I don't want to argue whether they're viable or not. My point I'm making is this. At the end of the day, they tell me I must wear a seat belt. We fought that because we were driving cars that were made out of real metal back then, if you remember, and they wanted us to be safe. They fought when they had motorcyclists wear helmets. The death rate for motorcycles, not the injuries, but death rates immediately went down for motorcycle crashes within the next 12 months. The point I'm making is this. It's not that big of a deal. I'm not feeling like I give up any of my freedoms, and I appreciate the opportunity to keep our city as safe as possible. Talking to a friend of mine at Ada today, I said, how's it going with the mask mandate? Ada has passed. And he says, no big deal. You put it on when you're around people, you take it off when you're in your car. So my point is I don't want to add a lot of you know, excitement to this. To me, it's just a public safety issue. I appreciate your time today. and. Uh, I know we're going to do the right thing, whatever that is. This is our country. We make decisions. If Councilman Smith doesn't want to wear a mask, he doesn't have to. But if we want to mandate safety, if you have to have shots to go to school, if you have to wear a seat belt, if you have to wear a helmet to ride a motorcycle in certain states, then at the end of the day, this is just another simple way to do that. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you letting me come up. Thank you. Patty Freeman. They've all said it quite eloquently. Okay. Uh, Brad Bevins. I know Brad's here. I saw him a minute ago. Brad Bevins. There you go. How's it going today? All right. My name is Brad Bevins. Uh, 2019 North Main Street on All About You Plumbing. I didn't come in here today to uh, say who's right, wrong, this, and different, all that. Um, the mass deal, um, I don't see where it, it helps anything. I've been in construction, I've been in painting body, I've done a little bit of everything. And for a mask to uh, be effective, it's going to have to be something more than just some piece of paper that you put over your face or somebody wearing a bandana or somebody wearing a pair of underwear. I've seen that. You just, you know, it. I'm all for what is, you know, going to help somebody because that is what I do in my business. Here in McAllister, I don't care about New York. I don't care about California. I don't care about none because they don't care about me. They ain't down there talking, trying to save me from something. But I am from McAllister and P Pittsburgh County. I try to help my customers. So I don't want to do something that is going to put their self in uh, harm's way or nothing like that. But I do think that uh, we're all, um, we all got a lot of knowledge. We've all been in different areas and stuff. I think we need to come up with something that is going to be efficient and is going to be right than to put something over our face because it's no different. You know, my guys, it's hot out there. Everybody calls. They need their serial and stop. They need this. They need this. We go to their house, and we touch everything. Uh, if, the, if the mask is on and you're sweating, uh, if I sneeze, my nose, whatever, I'm going to rub my face. Well, I feel like, and I'm not no rocket scientist, don't get me wrong, because I don't know nothing about all this stuff, but I know that I handle a lot of nasty stuff in plumbing. 
And if I, if the coronavirus is going to be because of a mask, I don't, I don't see why me touching this right here, if I had a mask on, it's still, the particles still going to come out. If I touch this and then I rub my face and so everybody that's just been here, I'm, I'm there. So I, I feel like, you know, if, if, if we're going to do something, we're going to put something in place, put something in place that is a benefit and it's going to help and it's going to do something uh, for the people. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say that, that what you're doing is wrong or whatever y'all is trying to pass. And it, I don't even know. I do know that the coronavirus is here. I mean, you know, people's getting it. I haven't got it. None of my family's got it. Thank God, you know. Uh, I, the way I see it is any, anybody that knows me, been around me, might have been through many things in different parts of my life. The good Lord, if, if, if I'm going because of the coronavirus, that's where I'm going to go. If I'm going to go because somebody shot me down on Main Street, that's where I'm going to go. If I wreck a car, that's where it's going to go. If we keep him in front of us, he'll guide us. And if we are supposed to wear a mask, then I think, you know, God will show that that's what we're supposed to do. If not... It's easy to get off, get on, this and that. It's, it's just not even normal no more. You can't even, you can't even talk to nobody. You can't, you can't hear them. You can't, you know. And to me, if life is going to be like that, I mean, I really don't want to deal with it either. I want to be able to talk to you. I want to be able to see you. You know, a, a handshake is a handshake. And now you can't, you can't touch people. You can't do nothing. It, it's, you know, it's getting everybody pushed away from everything. And it's true. You know, I went on a trip to Colorado. One part in Colorado, no way. They wasn't dealing with it. And they, we had a blast. They, we didn't get sick. Everything went good, thank God. Went to another part. You ain't getting out of your vehicle. You cannot step out of the vehicle if you don't have a mask on. That's no fun. We just left. We was going to spend some days there and, and this and that. But I think it's going to be more, and it don't matter, you know, whether we make money, if the city goes broke or whatever, if the mask is the 100% deal, that's what we got to do, you know, to keep people from dying. But if it ain't, then it's don't. I mean, we should have... We should have 100%. When I go do a job, if you call me, any of them, anybody call me or any of my guys, go to your house, 110% they're going to do their job. So I think that we should be 110% sure exactly yes. what we need to do right here before we do something. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I don't have anybody else signed up. There's still an awful lot of people here. Did I miss anybody? My name is Connie Day, and I live at 2205 Apple Blossom Lane. And the reason I wanted to say something tonight is because I have a lifetime of someone being ill in my home. In the 1950s, does everybody remember the outbreak that we had from TB? Well, my mother was in the home for six months coughing blood with active TB till she finally went in the hospital. We were all there. My grandmother had 13 brothers and sisters. 